Today I want to share with you how to make evaporated milk. It's very easy to make and all you need is milk. And then you'll have it on hand whenever you have a recipe that calls for it and you'll never have to buy the little can again. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. To make evaporated milk, the first thing you want to start with is getting a heavy bottom saucepan. You can use enameled cast iron like I've got here, or you can use stainless steel, uh, or you can even use a nonstick pan. Uh, you know, the modern day nonstick pans are a lot better for you than the old, old school ones. And that one is going to be very easy to clean up. Next, all you're going to need is three cups of whole milk and I highly recommend that you make evaporated milk with whole milk. Yes, it is possible to do it with low fat milk and even skim milk or fat free milk. However, the final product is not going to be exactly like what you would find in a can of evaporated milk. And if you're using this evaporated milk in a recipe and you have made your evaporated milk with low fat milk or skim milk, you'll want to make some adjustment to your recipe regarding any thickening agents that you have in that recipe, such as some, something as simple as flour. Uh, you may have to add a little more if you're using an, a homemade evaporated milk that was made from low fat milk or fat free milk. Now I want to mention one more thing about the type of milk. You can use raw milk, you can use pasteurized milk, or you can even use ultra pasteurized milk in this recipe. Uh, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know I don't generally like ultra pasteurized milk. However, since we're going to be heating this for about 30 minutes, it's fine in this particular recipe. So if that's all you can find at your grocery store, you can certainly use that milk to make this evaporated milk. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and just pour our whole milk, our three cups of whole milk, into our heavy bottom saucepan. Now we're going to be reducing this by half. So what I like to do is take a clean spoon, the handle of a clean spoon, and just put it down into my uh, milk uh, to measure exactly how much milk I'm starting with. Then I'll take this out and it will have the wet mark right here. And I'll take some close-up pictures of everything that I'm doing and I'll overlay them so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But as this little bit of foam subsides, I'll show you that, that using this, the handle of the spoon, I've measured exactly how much milk I have in there. Then I'm gonna take a clean ruler and I'm gonna measure with the ruler exactly how if I can show this to you like this, exactly how much milk I've got in there. And it's just about an inch. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is take some kitchen twine, and this is food safe. And what I'm going to do is measure what would be half and, and mark it on my spoon with the kitchen twine. Now since this is about one inch, we need to reduce this to half an inch. So just using my ruler, or this is pretty easy also to eyeball, and I'll, I'll take a picture and overlay exactly what I'm doing. But all I'm gonna do is just tie this string onto the wooden spoon to about what would be a half an inch. And I find this is very helpful because a lot of times when you read recipes for making evaporated milk, it'll say reduce by half. But sometimes, because you'll see as we're reducing this, there's a film that develops around the edge that may be a little higher or a little lower than from where you actually started. And it can be difficult without actually taking the milk out and measuring it to see if you've reduced it by half. And so this I find works perfectly. I'm gonna put this into the milk and measure it you know, as we go. I won't leave it in the whole time, but as we get closer to the amount of time that it generally takes to evaporate three cups of milk to make evaporated milk, I'll test it with this and I'll have my little 
measure here. And I like to use a wooden spoon uh, tied with a little bit of string. But certainly if you have a food safe uh, ruler, this I, this I have back from my homeschooling days. This must be 15 years old. And I, I don't know if this is food safe. So I am hesitant to be putting that into the milk. But if you do have a food safe thermometer, you can certain thermometer food safe ruler, you can certainly use that too. Now the next thing that we're going to do is just bring this up to a medium simmer. And I will overlay it. Once we get to the medium simmer, I'll overlay a picture so you can see exactly what that looks like. And then we're going to want to turn it down to a low simmer. But we first want to bring it up to temp to about a medium simmer. Well, this has come up to a medium simmer. And I'll overlay a picture so you can see exactly what I mean, which is helpful for the beginner. And now what I'm going to do is just turn this down to low. And I'm going to let this simmer on low for about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, you know, it might be a little longer for you, a little shorter for you. It really depends on exactly what size uh, pot that you're using. But generally, somewhere in the 25 to 30 minute range is going to be sufficient. And we'll also test it with our spoon uh, measurement to see that it has, in fact, uh, evaporated by half. And over the course of those next 25 to 30 minutes, what you'll want to do is just use your spatula or your spoon, whatever you have, and periodically just give this a little stir. Uh, you may see that a film is going to form on top. That's fine. Nothing to worry about. Uh, just every once in a while, if you remember, just come by and give it a little, a little stir. And what you're going to be looking for as this uh, evaporates. It's going to become a little richer in color, a little more yellow, and slightly thicker. Now while this is simmering, I just want to explain the difference between evaporated milk and condensed milk. There are two different things. Evaporated milk is what we're making here today, and it's simply whole milk that's been allowed to evaporate by half. A lot of the water in the milk is evaporating out to make a more concentrated product. Condensed milk, on the other hand, is milk and sugar. So it's a sweetened milk that, again, is allowed to evaporate to a certain point where it not only becomes thicker, it's sweeter. Both are often called for um, in making certain types of baked goods, like evaporated milk is often used in making a pumpkin pie. Uh, both evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk uh, often are used in uh, fancy coffee drinks, uh, and sweetened condensed milk is also uh, used in baked goods. And the real difference is using one over the other is that sweetened condensed milk generally will call for less additional added sugar into the recipe because it's already sweetened. The nice thing about being able to make these homemade is that if you have basic pantry staples, which usually milk in your fridge and sugar in your pantry, uh, allows you a lot of flexibility. You can easily make evaporated milk. You can easily make sweetened condensed milk. And you don't have to worry if you are, have a recipe that calls for one or, these, or one or the other and you don't have that can of sweetened condensed milk or that can of evaporated milk. Now you can just make it homemade. You can pretty much always have it on hand whenever you need it. Alrighty, well this has cooled off to a low simmer and I'll overlay a picture. Basically what you're looking for is very little activity on the top of the milk, but around the edges you're going to see uh, some bubbles and a little bit of foam forming. That's perfect. You just want to set it down to your lowest temperature and as I said, just periodically come by and stir it. Well, this is simmered for about 30 minutes. It's reduced beautifully. I'll overlay a picture so you can see how the color has changed slightly and the consistency is much thicker. And now what we want to do is get a strainer and a measuring cup or a bowl, whatever you have, and we're going to pour this through the strainer. And the reason that we want to do that is during this reduction process, as the water in the milk is evaporating, you know, you may have noticed a little skin, so to speak, uh, forming on the top of your milk or, or around the edges, a little clumpiness. We want to strain it through this and make sure that our final product, our evaporated milk, is completely smooth and collects any little bits like that that uh, 
may have developed during the evaporation process. And now we'll go ahead and strain this right through our strainer. And you just want to keep working your milk, your evaporated milk now, through your strainer until you get every little last bit of the liquid. And you'll have just these little bits, and I'll show you what's remaining. I'll take a close-up picture, but you'll probably have a little bit of uh, what formed the skin that formed on the top that will remain in your strainer. Now, after you strain out all the bits, you should have about a cup and a half, one and a half cups, or 12 fluid ounces of evaporated milk because we started with three cups and we decreased it by half. And the reason why we want to make 12 fluid ounces is because if we are using this in a recipe that calls for a can of evaporated milk, that can is usually standardized at 12 fluid ounces. So this amount is perfect. Now certainly you can make more, you can make less, but if you're making evaporated milk for a particular recipe that calls for a can of evaporated milk, this is the perfect amount. And what I like to do is just take a knife, this is a pretty little canning jar, but you can store it any way you want. I'm just gonna pour this right in here, and then I'm gonna put the cap on, and this can really stay fresh in the refrigerator for about a week. So if you are planning on making maybe a pumpkin pie, <laughs> which often calls for evaporated milk, you can make this in advance and have this in your fridge for seven days and it should be quite fresh and ready, ready to be used. Now if you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, consider subscribing to my channel below. And if you'd like to learn about making more homemade pantry staples, click on this video over here and I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.